thank you very much. Um, as you see, we have different uh, references for making, but what's different to do is as important as the surgery itself. So be careful with your with your dressing. It's my business. Our advices will be my uh, the next is uh, Alexander Pellegrino from Switzerland, <coughs> and he speaks about the PMMO. So, Alex, thank you very much. Okay. Good morning. I'm going to talk to you about the PMMO in this session of uh, basic orthopedic surgery. And uh, this is the clinical presentation of statical metatarsalgia with uh, typical plantar hypertrichosis a very good indication for the MMO. The DMMO is often the first percutaneous procedure to begin with, so it's especially important to avoid technical mistakes at the start of our learning curve. It's extremely important to have a good hand control in order to avoid malposition of the burr, soft tissue injury and skin burning, which can lead to wound healing problems and infections. We need to practice this eye-hand coordination, like we heard from Julian, like learning to drive a car for the first time. Only after some hours of exercise, we will get that automatic hand control. That's why minimum invasive surgery must be practiced in the wet lab with the neighbors in order to get the driving lessons before operating on patients. Non-resolved metatarsalgia or recurrence is often due to incomplete osteotomies of one or more metatarsals or to secondary dislocation. We will see later how we can avoid this problem by controlling our osteotomy. The heat generated by a too fast drilling burn can lead to bone necrosis, so keep the drill speed under 6,000. Rinse with saline and, if possible, don't use a tourniquet for the MMOs. The blood flow will also cool the burr. Rinsing and cooling will be very important in your percutaneous surgery, so let your assistant help you and you can be concentrated controlling your osteotomy. First thing to avoid mistakes, we need the appropriate specific instruments and motors, as we heard before. Now, it's very important to use simple helps to determine the right place for the distal metatarsal osteotomies. Start with the skin references of the extensive tendons. Then, take the foot and check the flexibility of the forefoot and feel the depth of the metatarsal heads. After the osteotomy, you will feel the elevation. Then you can use the fluoro scan to determine the position of the MTP joints. Next, perform the soft tissue procedures if needed, like the tenotomies and the dorsal capsulolysis. This depends if you have hematose, cladotomes, and deviations. Now, we confirm the correct subcapital position of the burr with the fluoro scan, not too distal, not too proximal, just at the level of the neck of the metatops. This is the desired angle of the DMMO. And we can see that on a 45 degree plane on oblique fluoro scan. If we go too steep, We will have more elevation of the metatarsal head. If the cut is too flat, more shortening will result. We should use always a different incision for the DMMO to stay out of the MTP joint and avoid postoperative stiffness. Then prepare the neck of the metatarsal with a rasp or a mosquito clamp. Then you can do the osteotomy with the burr and do, the, do so by an oscillating movement 
turning your wrists gently in your preferred direction to cut, to cut first the lateral, plantar and medial cortex. In this view, in this view you see the supination of the wrist to finish the movement in the 90 degree position in relation to the metatarsal axis. That's the position to cut the last cortex, the dorsal one. Normally you feel a click after that, that means the head elevates. Then, under the floor scan, distract the toe gently to release the last periosteal attachments and control if the osteotomy is complete. Where do we start? the DMMOs. If you are a right-handed surgeon in the left foot, it is easiest for, uh, to begin with the fourth metatarsal, then the third, then the second. This allows the fourth to fall out of the way before doing the third and so on. In the right foot, it is easiest to begin with the second and to go down to the third and fourth. So for the right-handed surgeon, always DMMO from right to left, and then for the left-handed surgeon, it will be from left to right. Be careful, because it's important how you finish the end position of the bird. Here, the bird does not stop at 90 degrees, according to the metatarsal axis. The final cut goes toward the inside and backwards. Thus, the metatarsal head will move medially backwards. That's what we are looking for sometimes. But, if it's on the contrary, here the final cut goes toward lateral and backward, then T-head will go laterally and backwards and make the foot wider. This must definitely be avoided. Here the cut is perfect, perpendicular to the metatarsal axis, no lateral displacement, this is the right cut. For the post-operative care, we heard now Piotr uh, very good about all the different um, types of um, preferences, but we can allow surely immediate weight bearing with a post-operative shoe for the first month, and the taping and dressing is essential, as we heard. We check that after one or two weeks, and where the other controls are after one month to six weeks. So the bone consolidation is expected after three or four months. This is the normal biologic consolidation time of every bone osteotomy. So I don't see any difference to the open ones. So again, I want to remember that the essential thing to start with the minimal invasive surgery on the wet lab and the cadaver trainings. Um, there are many of them all over the world now in uh, very much countries. So I want to invite you to, to take part of this group and make for all the good. Thank you.